So hello everyone and welcome. I didn't make a news video for this because it was just a single news bit, but Nemo is also coming in like two or three days or whatever. And of course we need to take a look at how good Nemo actually is. She's pretty good. So we're going to go in and first off, once again, we're going to have a look at her disc and her type and maybe some of her stats and uh, just see if maybe we can already make a judgment on if she's on a basic level good or not. And we see that she has triple XL discs. She's a support type. And you guys might already remember that I've said in some other videos like, Hey guys, wouldn't it be better if support types were just Excel gorillas? Wouldn't that be way better for supporting others? And that's exactly what Nemo has said to herself, because Nemo is actually way smarter than Toka. So Nemo is indeed an Excel gorilla. Let's look at her stats, and we look, see that she has some balanced stats between attack and defense, but they're both still pretty low. If we look at other characters with a balanced stat spread across attack and defense, like Kanae, we see that she has both way more, not way more, but noticeably more attack and defense on both fronts, so her attack and defense aren't that great. But tell you what, guys, we know that from the lore, Nemu is supposed to be a really frail character who is really weak and stuff, so it makes sense that her attack and defense are that low. But then why does she have 29,000 HP? I don't even know how it's possible that she has this much HP. I mean, lore-wise it doesn't make sense, but who cares? I actually took a, look, look, took a look around at some other characters who have really high HP. She has more HP than Ultimate Madoka. And you might look at these numbers and be like, wait a second, but Nemu's number is lower. Yeah, but Nemu gets 9% stat bonus on HP and Ultimate Madoka only gets 7%. So she has like noticeably more HP than Ultimate Madoka, which in my opinion is pretty darn awesome. So if we just look at all of these things, we can see that, hey, maybe her stats, like attack and defense, aren't that great, but she can, like, stay around. She's got HP. Uh, as long as she doesn't get hit by really big uh, hits, she's going to be fine. Uh, and being a support that has triple Excel disc, she's going to be able to pump out a lot of Excel combos. They're going to be able to give herself and others a lot of MP and stay alive for a long time. And that's really darn good for being just some supportive character that's really really good especially on magia teams of course why would you run this on a team that isn't a magia team but yeah this is really pretty darn good so far next up let's just take a quick peek at her uh, me me personal memo which in my opinion has the my favorite uh, memo personal art because i guess i'm just a, a sucker for fish eye lens kind of views that look into the distance but yeah that's pretty good an unobtainable thing remove buffs all from enemies not from your stuff that would be weird so this is something that we're going to have to keep in the back of our heads, by the way, because it's going to come up again. Remove all enemy buffs. Buffs are the red symbols, as it says right here, red icon effect. So if the enemy is like, gives himself an attack up or a defense up, excel up, blast up, anything like that. But importantly, it can't remove passive effects. So if, for example, the enemy has an I made friends and they gain like 20% attack from the I made friends, you can't remove that because it's a passive effect. But if it's like, if, if an enemy buffs themselves, uh, like if they activate an active uh, during a challenge quest, you might have some challenge quests where enemies give themselves more attack or defense, you could remove those with the personal. So, as is the case with most personals, it has some very niche uses where you might find like one or two quests in the entire game where this thing would be really useful. But if it is really useful, sure, it's gonna be great. So just keep in the back of your head, if you have Nemo, that her personal exists. And if you ever run into a quest where it might be important to remove enemy buffs, yeah, take it. Moving on. As a support, of course, we hope that she has good connects as someone who has the ability to generate a lot of magia with her Excel discs. We also hope that she has good magia and doppel. Let's look at her connect first. Her connect, which is called Complete the Series with Me. Isn't it called something different on NA? It's called Let's Finish My Book Series. Yeah, whatever. And what her connect does is it gives a bit of an attack up, a bit of an HP restore, mostly the same as uh, Iroha's um, connect. By the way, I haven't mentioned this before. It's more of a lore thing, or it might as well, because it doesn't matter, uh, in that Iroha, Nemu, and Toka supposedly were supposed to originally be a lot closer connected in the lore, and that is why all of their doppels uh, look rather similar. But then they kind of scrapped that and said, ah, fuck it. So the doppels still look similar, but the, there's no more lore connection between them, so eh, whatever. So... The connect is also rather similar to Iruha's, however, and there's a very important thing about this. If it was just HP restore and attack up, it would be, eh, decent, but yeah, whatever. But with this, you have chance to dazzle on attack. <coughs> I had to cough because that was so amazing, because dazzle is probably, or bewitch as it's called in NA, is 
easily uh, or probably the best status ailment in mirrors because it gives an enemy a 50% chance to attack. It's way better than stun because the problem is if you stun an enemy or like charm them or like uh, bind them, they don't get a turn. And if they don't get a turn, they don't draw discs. And if they don't draw discs, other characters on their team are going to get a Puella combo a lot more easily. So by stunning enemies, but not all enemies, you're basically giving the enemy free Puella combos, which is pretty terrible. However, with Dazzle, they still get discs. So your enemies, if they're Dazzles, they're still drawing discs, but their discs now miss. And that's way better uh, than stunning someone, because this will indeed, instead of make you take more damage from enemy Puellas will make you take less damage because the enemies will just miss. Of course, since it's, it, it bewitches also the level 3 uh, version of the mischance ailment, so the other two being Fog and Darkness, so not only does it have the highest mischance, but I think Fog is like 15 and Darkness like 25, I don't, I don't remember. Uh, actually, it's like 25, 35, whatever. And so it, you have the most amount of mischance on this, but also the enemy takes 80% more damage from the element it's weak against. And also, the enemy is unable to recover HP. That is what you get for being a level 3 status ailment. Dayum. That is pretty darn amazing. And you get that applied with 100% chance. That is basically the best thing about her connect, especially in PvP. If you apply this to a bunch of enemies in mirrors, uh, you can be pretty happy because the enemy is probably going to miss a bunch of discs unless you're playing ranked, in which case the enemy will still hit and probably crit you and you're going to remove all your hair from your head like I did because how is that even possible that the enemy still hits all discs with 50% mischance? Fucking RNG. But yeah, that makes, makes the connect pretty alright, but moving on. So we can see that she's pretty good at supporting because she uh, is able to heal people, she's able to debuff the enemy, and that's kind of stuff that you want. You want to keep your people alive while disrupting the enemy. So, so giving survivability to other people and disruption, those are like the two key points that make a good support, and Nemu has both of this on her connect, which is pretty darn good. Other characters usually do something like this by maybe stunning enemies or by giving defense buffs, for example. So that's other ways you can do that. But look at her, look at, looking at her magia, we have Children of Creation, which is a pretty good name for what the fan, crea fan name was. The fan name was My Dear Ones. Yeah, I'll take Children of Creation over that. And we see that it's a single target magia. We haven't seen a lot of those recently. Uh, it does like 760% on magia level 5, which is, I think, the normal amount of damage that a magia does. However, what does it actually do? It applies to the target that it hits, Charm. Curse, Darkness, gives all allies attack up and removes granted effects from target. Whew, that's a lot of hatred towards whatever this thing hits. So if you use, I, I would assume you would use this in uh, tougher challenge quests where maybe there's singular enemies that are big threats. So you use this on a big threat that you want out of the game and that you want to screw up as much as possible. So you use that on them, they get charmed, they get cursed, they get darkness. Maybe they have status ailment resistance and they resist like one or two of those. But even if they have some status ailment resistance, as long as they don't have 100% resistance, they're probably going to get hit by at least one of those, which is going to screw with them quite a bit. Curse is pretty darn effective, charm is all right. Uh, darkness is also quite all right as an effect, so especially the curse is going to be pretty devastating on this. So yeah, this is a pretty cool effect to have uh, so many different it sells ailments, but it doesn't end there. It also buffs everyone's attack by 30% uh, at mark level 5, which is also pretty darn awesome for three turns. Damn, oh my god, that is such an amazing support magia, actually. But it doesn't end there. It, it does even more. It removes granted effects, and you feel like, wait a second, we've seen this earlier, right? Where it said remove buffs. No, this is this is buffs. This is granted effects. This is a different thing. So remove granted effects. You can see that the symbol is very different. See, look at that. The symbol is very different. So it removes granted effects, which are the yellow icon effects, but once again, granted effects from passive and more are not uh, affected. This doesn't happen that often that an enemy gives himself a granted effect, because usually in quests, when enemies buff themselves, most of the time they will just buff themselves with uh, an attack up, or they'll buff themselves with a defense up, and those are red buffs. Sometimes enemies will buff themselves with uh, a buff that allows them to apply status ailments on attacks. So for example, um, they buff themselves and then now every time they attack, the enemy gets cursed. Or they, and that's a yellow effect. Or they buff themselves with an effect that gives them critical hit chance. Awesome. But here's the thing. They buff them, usually, usually they buff themselves with those effects on their own turn and those effects last a single turn. So this is useless. 
because it's the effect disappears right after the turn anyway. This is barely ever useful, mostly because enemies just use grind effects, like I said, on their own turn, and then it's like ends at the uh, before the beginning of the next turn, so it's kind of pointless. So this is yeah, mostly useless. Maybe there's like one or two quests where it's gonna be interesting, but 99% of cases this is gonna be useless. But good that it at least is there, I guess. So let's look at this, and you guys last time didn't believe me that her stand really is called Penenenemu. But yeah, we have her uh, stand Penenenemu, and what it does is it basically does more damage and almost the same. This is really weird, because here's the thing, you might look at the attack up and say, oh wait a second, it does give all allies 30% attack up and it's 20%, but when you double, you are on Magi level 5, and if you are on Magi level 5, you also get 30% attack because of the scaling, so it gives the same amount of attack to everyone. So it basically does exactly the same because these things don't scale, the attack is the same. It does exactly the same, it just does more damage. So if you're looking at this, you might think to yourself, wouldn't it be better if instead of using a doppel I were to use two magia? And I'd say, yeah, yeah, that almost, I think this is one of those characters where you kind of almost always want to just use two magia instead of a doppel. However, there's one little thing that I find very interesting and I need some help from you guys. It says remove buffs from target and this says remove granite effects. So it almost looks like her doppel does remove buffs from a target, but if I look through the list, she doesn't appear anywhere in here. And also it's kind of weird that her doppel does something, it like loses an effect that the magia had, so it no longer removes granted effects. Is there something going on here? Is there some mistranslation? Is it also supposed to be removed grounded effects down here? I don't know. Tell me guys if you know more about this, but this looks really weird. So yeah, this is basically Nemo herself. She seems pretty darn good. Um, about her using two magia instead of a doppel, you might think to yourself, wait a second, if I get her to mag level 5, but I do not complete her doppel quest, and do not unlock her doppel, then even if she gets to 200 MP, she can doppel twice, she can magia twice, instead of being forced to doppel. I'm not going to tell you not to unlock her doppel so that you can use two magia instead of uh, doppel, especially because on some quests you kind of actually want to have the damage, but I'm at least gonna say that it is something that you can do if you feel inclined to have her use magia twice for uh, double the buffs, and bu uh, double the status ailments over two turns instead of just having more damage. So that's something you could potentially do, but I'm not gonna tell you to do it, it's up to you. And you can't go back afterwards anyway, but I mean, if you do get the double or whatever, it doesn't, it's not that important in my opinion. So Nemo, she's a really good supporter. She's a really, really good supporter. She can, she can heal people, keep them alive. She can give them a bit of attack, but that's standard. However, on top of that, gives Dazzle on attack, which is absolutely amazing, both in PvP and in PvE as well. So everywhere it's going to be pretty darn amazing. Her Magia is a single target, which kind of sucks. But on the other side, but on the other hand, even though it's single target, which usually sucks, she has a lot of really awesome effects. She spams enemy with status ailments, while also buffing her entire team, which makes a really good support in a Magia team as well. You can spam uh, Magias every single turn and you keep racking up um, that uh, attack up all the time. That's really, really awesome. You know what stacks really well with attack up? Magia up. So if you have her together with Atoka and Toka and Nemu both spam Magia, they both buff each other uh, and most notably Nemu uh, Atoka gets buffed like twice and she like does ridiculous damage. So yeah, that's pretty darn awesome. She's pretty, pretty good. Only problem that she has is that she has not that great defense. I think I said she has high defense, a high HP, but with def defense not being that great, it means that a lot of smaller attacks can wear her down. And also she's unlimited, so many people might not want to roll for her immediately because she's unlimited. Also, she is forest type, which um, is great that you can stand on a tercio, but it does mean that sometimes on some quests you will just find a fire type that destroys you, which kind of sucks. Um, would much rather be like a light type or whatever. I mean, they're still still dark type, but at least against in that case, you're also effective against them. Um, but yeah, so apart from her being force type, you have a one-sided weakness, um, and her 
maybe being worn down by multiple attacks, her being unlimited, her not having that much attack as well. They're all like nitpicks. There's many nitpicks you can say about Nemu. Uh, and also you can only really put her in a, a good Magia team because she doesn't buff Blast in any way. I mean, she gives attack up great, but I'll just take other supports that give Blast up as well. Uh, other characters in general give Blast up as well. So overall, she's a pretty decent all-rounder support who especially works really well in a Magia team. Um, if you absolute, But the thing is, if you absolutely want a good forest type. Holy Aina is a blaster and one of the best blasters in the game, so I'm actually not quite sure if you would pick this over Holy Aina. Probably not, because blasting is so darn awesome, and especially with SE. Holy Aina's SE is actually pretty darn broken. Um, so I guess if you already have Holy Aina and you don't immediately need another forest type, then don't worry about this. If you, in general you don't care about Magia teams or Excel teams, then yeah, whatever, don't, don't worry about this one. But yeah, she's a pretty decent pick. Moving on to other stuff that is in the... Um, in the gacha though, we have a... Once again, this, goes, this is gonna go rather quickly because there's not a whole lot to talk about in this one. We have a login for the Beyond, as it is called on the, the fan translation. The fan translations for these are like way more dramatic than the actual like official translation. You have a longing for the Beyond. Officially, admiring the Beyond. Or you have peace to this battered dead land. And this is like the Japanese text. And then the official translation is tranquility in a wasteland. Okay. And then you have... Three geniuses, three geniuses, three geniuses. Wow, amazing. So Along for the Beyond, or uh, Admiring the Beyond, is one of those memoria that I keep saying this because this is one of, because this is just a time where a lot of these memoria are being released. You're not gonna see this on other um, gachas, but this is, this is just a handful of gachas in a row now, where they just release some unlimited memoria that gives a little bit of attack up on it and some other effect, where I'm like, well, if you don't have any other memoria that gives more attack up than this, Grab it. You you should be like if you rolled on some of these earlier gachas, you should have a handful of like random attacker memorias like ra lying around now. And if you roll on this one, you're gonna have even more random attacker memorias lying around, which are really good because attack up is probably the best effect to be on a memoria, so this is pretty good. Uh, it also gives start and resistance up, which in some cases is going to be really awesome. So um, the only downside of this is that I haven't actually I don't actually see this memorial anymore. I'm playing on the JP server. I don't even think I have this, even though it's unlimited. It's somehow really rare. Uh, you also need to get this to MLB to make full uh, effect of uh, full use of the attack up. Some other memorial might give more attack up. But in general, this is actually pretty decent, especially because the secondary effect of stats resistance is pretty good on a handful of quests. So yeah, this is, this one's alright. Then we have Pizza's Battered Dead Land, which gives, which has the wrong effect it icon. This is an attack up icon. It should be a Magia icon. Whatever. It gives Magia damage up to all allies for one turn, which is all right. Uh, if you have multiple of these, it does stack because uh, Magia damage up is a red buff, and red buffs do stack additively. So. If you, had a, if you had a handful of these, you would not want to MLB this one. You would just have like four or five of these on a Magia team. And then when everyone has their Magia lined up and you have this one turn where you lose like two doubles and a Magia or whatever on one turn, you would just spam all of these at once. Use some other actives, maybe use a Meteorain uh, as long, alongside other attacker memoria, other Magia up memoria. And you would absolutely destroy the enemy with this. So this is also pretty guard darn awesome if you have a handful of these spread out across your entire team on a pure Magia team. So yeah, this one's also pretty alright. Uh, yeah, this is my Magia damage effect that for some reason. How water has that? Whatever. So they also have three geniuses, which is um, it's not that great. It's a single target poison. I mean, it has a low cooldown, and on in mirrors, this one is active on turn three, which is all right. But apart from that, like 25% defense down on one enemy, that's not a whole lot. On only on one enemy, poison. Poison is the worst status ailment in the game, apart from maybe uh, skill seal <coughs> or spell uh, or magia seal, depending on the situation. So, eh. Highly situational, probably not good. Uh, I guess if you really absolutely definitely want a single target poison that is active on turn 3 in mirrors, then yeah. But apart from that, nah. So yeah, that was that. Overall, if you really like Nemo, this is a pretty darn good gacha. If you, or if you like what I talked about during Nemo's uh, review, this is pretty darn alright. Once again, though, if you if you like some of these memoria, I keep needing to say this because some people ask me if it should I roll for this memoria. Don't ever roll a gacha just for the memoria. It's not worth it. The drop rate for memoria is too bad for it to be worth it to roll just for memoria. Roll a gacha if you want the character that is on it. Although if you are rolling for the character, 
it's good to know if the memoria you get from it are also good or not. So yeah, that was it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time. Ring the bell and whatever. Bye.